All right, I've got my coffee and my blue light blocking glasses to hopefully counteract the fact that I'm drinking coffee at noon. Hey everybody, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some editing that I'm doing on an image specifically showing you how to put a person behind glass. If that's something you want to learn how to do in your composites, then stay tuned. Okay, just so you have a basic understanding of how I got to this point, I am just going to go through these layers and um, show you how I put this image together. I got this image from the website Pixabay, and I basically just used it for like a base for the for the room. I kept the baseboard and that's all that I kept. I don't even think this is a real image. I think this is a computer gener generated room, but just for the sake of helping me lay things out, I kind of used it as a as a base. I didn't like that the floorboard was a little bit pink. I put uh, a layer to change the hue and saturation. This is the floor that I decided to go with. This is actually an image that I took of the wall in a Burger King. Some levels adjustments. Here's my background fabric that I used. I did take half of it. I copied it and flipped it. If you look here, you can still see some like fabric wrinkles, but you can see how it's symmetrical like that. And that works because it's supposed to be a repeated pattern wallpaper. So being able to flip it like that was fine. I added, this is very subtle change, I added a paper on top to make it look just a touch more wallpapery. And here I've got my bell jar that I decided to use and I did decide to go with the one that I shot with the same background. I thought that it gave it the distorted blurred out look that looked a little bit more natural. I tried the black background just to see if that's what I wanted to do and I didn't like it. It worked okay, but this looks better. So I went with this one. If you look here though, you can see that floorboard is not visible behind. I copied and pasted another layer of floorboard. I blurred it out to match the distortion and I select lighten. It looks a little bit more natural. And you know what? I just realized I should erase this out because it is adding a little bit blur to the side there. I'll do that later. I have some burning that I did, just kind of a little bit of a shadow. So if you wanna learn how to cut a person out to put into a composite, I have other YouTube videos for that and I will have them in the description below. So check that out if you wanna know how I did that. I did some adjust adjustments on myself, some color and dodge and burn. Right now I'm just sitting in front of the bell jar and it looks okay. Some people might look at that and be like, okay, sure, whatever. How I'm going to make it look like I'm behind it though is really the glare. It's the highlights that are going to be in front of me. I'm going to copy the bell jar layer. I'm selected here, control J. I've got another one and now I'm going to bring it up in front of me. So I pull it up, so it's gonna go in front of all the things, and now I'm erased again, that's okay. If I select Lighten, you can tell, okay, you're sort of getting there. It's, the background's lighter than my dress, so it's still erasing that. So what I'm going to do, and I'm gonna do this as a another layer, you could do it as just an adjustment right onto it. I always work in layers so that I can change it if I need to create a clipping mask so it's only going to affect the bell jar. So this is clipped to this. And now what I wanna do is I wanna darken all the medium and dark tones so that they basically erase because it's on lighten. So anything that gets darker is going to start to fade away. So I'll pull up the blacks and you can see that you can start to see the dress coming back. There's still wallpaper look there, so I'm gonna pull this back. But you can see some of the glare, and I want the highlights to be a little bit stronger. So it's just playing with the, the levels here until I get what I'm looking for. The problem that I'm having now is these streaks are looking quite saturated 
in comparison to down here, this just looks white. This looks kind of purple toned. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to also add another layer that is a clipping mask that is black and white. And I need to clip it. And by clipping it just to this bell jar, this bell jar is, if it was on normal, it would be black and white, but because it's on lighten and really the only thing that I am pulling out of that are these little pieces here. It gets rid of that weird saturation and it's just white. So I have just the light glare in front of me. And looking at this, I'm not entirely sure what these streaks were. I don't totally love them. So I think what I'm going to do is to blur just these two streaks. I really like this part. This is running all the way through properly. I could even get rid of them if I wanted to. So now that I have myself in there, I'm able to see what I like and see what I don't like and do a little bit more edits on the glare layer. And that is how I put myself behind glass. There are, of course, other ways to do it. Like Photoshop is amazing because you can do almost anything in multiple ways. And depending on the image that you have, you might want to do things a little bit differently, but this is what worked for me for this image. That was one way that you can put somebody or something behind glass. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to stay up to date on all the things that I'm creating. And of course you can leave any questions or comments that you have below and I will surely answer them. If you're interested in how I shot this image, I do have another video, a behind the scenes video of shooting for this image and talking about all the pieces and how I planned it out beforehand. One of the biggest things to have a successful composite image is the forehand planning. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. That will also be linked below. Have a great day.